remind us folks are uh, locked in back hold time is 3 minutes and 16 seconds. NTD, CTLS on 212, we're ready to go. All right, very good. And launch director, with that cleanup, we're going to go ahead and proceed. Yes, sir, please do. All right, and all personnel, we are going to pick up the clock here momentarily. And GLS, you can resume the clock on your mark. I copy that. Countdown clock will resume on my mark. Three, two, one, mark. E minus. So, for auto sequence, start. And off to Atlantis as computers has occurred. Solid rocket booster nozzle steering check and work. 20. Firing chain is armed. 15. Go for main engine start. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. All three engines up and burning. 2, 1, 0, and lift the final liftoff of Atlantis on the shoulders of the space shuttle. America will continue the dream. Roger roll, Atlantis. Houston now controlling the flight of Atlantis. The space shuttle spreads its wings one final time for the start of a sentimental journey into history. 24 seconds into the flight. Roll program complete. Atlantis now heads down, wings level on the proper alignment for its eight and a half minute ride to orbit. Four and a half million pounds of hardware and humans taking aim on the International Space Station. 40 seconds into the flight, the three liquid fuel main engines throttling back to 72% of rated performance in the bucket, reducing stress on the shuttle as it goes transonic for the final time. Engines now revving up, standing by for the throttle up call. from Capcom Barry Wilmore, a transducer, instrumentation only, no action required. Atlantis now 15 miles in altitude, already 16 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, one minute, 40 seconds into the flight. Atlantis flexing its muscles one final time. Atlantis traveling almost 2,600 miles an hour, 21 miles in altitude, 24 miles downrange, standing by for solid rocket booster separation. Booster officer confirms staging a good solid rocket booster separation. Guidance now converging. The main engine steering the shuttle on a pinpoint path to its preliminary orbit. Two minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. Atlantis already traveling 3,200 miles an hour, 35 miles in altitude, 50 miles downrange. The propulsion officer reports the orbital maneuvering system engines have ignited. Atlantis kicking on its afterburners for one minute, 23 seconds for the final phase of powered flight. Atlantis, two engine towel.
failure. However, Atlantis's three engines performing perfectly. Four minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. Atlantis currently traveling 5,500 miles an hour, 62 miles in altitude, almost 200 miles downrange. Four minutes of powered flight remaining. Atlantis speeding straight as an arrow toward its date with the International Space Station Sunday morning. Coming up on the five minute mark, Atlantis now traveling 6,500 miles an hour, 66 miles in altitude, 250 miles downrange. Atlantis, press to ATO. Press to ATO. That call indicating we can make minimal orbital targets in the event of an engine failure. All three engines continue to function normally. Atlantis will begin its slow roll to a heads up position shortly. Five and a half minutes into the flight, Atlantis traveling 7,700 miles an hour, 315 miles downrange. Atlantis, single engine, Ops 3. Single engine, Ops 3. And the guidance officer here in Mission Control confirms that the computers are commanding the main engines to swivel. Engine Zaragoza 104. Single engine Zaragoza 104. We've rolled to a heads up position now, providing better communications to the tracking and data relay satellite system as Atlantis heads uphill. Six minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. Atlantis press to Miko. That call indicates that we can make our normal orbital cutoff targets in the event of an engine failure. However, all three main engines continue to function normally. Nominal. Fergie, go the plus X, go the pitch. Nominal set down plan, go for the plus X, go for the pitch. That call indicating uh, that we will be in good shape uh, for the uh, orientation of, of Atlantis for external tank uh, photography following main engine cutoff. Now seven minutes into the flight. One minute, 20 seconds till main engine cutoff. Atlantis traveling 12,000 miles an hour. The main engines will uh, soon be throttling down once again to limit the stress on the shuttle and its four crew members to that of three times the effect of gravity. Atlantis currently traveling at a speed of more than four miles a second. One minute of powered flight remaining for Atlantis. Three good main engines, three good auxiliary power units, three good fuel cells. Approaching the eight minute mark into the flight. Atlantis now traveling more than 15,000 miles an hour. Eight minutes, 15 seconds into the flight, standing by for main engine cutoff. That'll be followed a few seconds later by the separation of the external fuel tank. Booster officer confirms main engine cutoff. For the last time, the space shuttle's main engines have fallen silent as the shuttle slips into the final chapter of a storied 30-year adventure. Now standing by for external tank separation. Atlantis off the tank. Commander Chris Ferguson will be maneuvering Atlantis now into an orientation to enable Sandy Magnus to capture digital still imagery of the external fuel tank as it drifts away. Ohms one is not required. Your preliminary Ohms two TIG 
37 minutes. 37 minutes, uh, no ohms one required, thanks. This is Mission Control Houston, Atlantis safely in its preliminary orbit. Following a flawless launch from the Kennedy Space Center, albeit about two and a half minutes late at uh, 10.29 a.m. Central Time. The launch slightly delayed uh, while engineers at the Kennedy Space Center confirmed uh, the complete retraction of the gaseous vent arm at the launch pad. Now looking over the shoulder of uh, pilot Doug Hurley on the flight deck of Atlantis, this pilot point of view camera. Five minutes till touchdown. Atlantis soon will be going subsonic. Our first view through infrared cameras at the Kennedy Space Center. Commander Chris Ferguson now flying Atlantis. Three and a half minutes until touchdown. Piercing the pre-dawn sky as the space shuttle announces its arrival at the launch site with its signature sound of twin sonic booms having gone subsonic for the last time. Atlantis, on at the 180. Copy, on at the 180. Pilot Doug Hurley now taking a few seconds of stick time on Atlantis. 
With a fitting elegance for its final moments of flight, Atlantis takes one last lap around the Kennedy Space Center. Atlantis on at the 90. On at the 90. Commander Chris Ferguson now back on the stick. Atlantis uh, descent of a commercial jetliner. Field inside, Houston. Atlantis, field inside. As it approaches the runway, Commander Chris Ferguson will flare up Atlantis's nose to burn off excess speed prior to the landing gear deployment by pilot Doug Hurley. Once again, the interview camera, one minute till touchdown. The pre-flare maneuver executed. Landing gear down and locked. Main gear touchdown. Hurley now deploying the drag chute. Ferguson rotating the nose gear down to the deck. Nose gear touchdown. Having fired the imagination of a generation, a ship like no other, its place in history secured, the space shuttle pulls into port for the last time. Its voyage at an end. and we'll take this opportunity to congratulate you, Atlantis, as well as the thousands of passionate individuals across this great spacefaring nation who truly empowered this incredible spacecraft, which for three decades has inspired millions around the globe. Job well done, America. Hey, thanks, Butch. Uh, great words. Great words. You know, the space shuttle's changed the way we uh, view the world and it's changed uh, the way we view our universe. A lot of emotion today, but one thing's indisputable. America's not going to stop exploring. Thank you, Columbia, Challenger, Discovery, Endeavor, and our ship Atlantis. Thank you for protecting us and bringing this program to such a fitting end. God bless all of you. God bless the United States of America. Inspiring comments, Atlantis. We'll meet you on 5-3.